a Mills Museum in the island, a small island of Mallorca, like half, half an hour plane from Barcelona. And for us, it was a laboratory on, of natural light. You have seen the model moving and crossing thick walls of 80 centimeters. This was an old building or a machine to more, um, more smash, mold the grain. And we managed to make these entrances of a natural light. And here is Ricardo drawing how the geometry we want to, to place. It's because it's, there was a plane. We have to be very careful with the drawings and the dimensions because it's not a, a construction site that you can vis visit with frequency. And you have to take the plane. So the next week, we will find this perfectly defined. And this is a small hole that existed on the wall. And we wanted the light to get in uh, strongly. We also made some small models for the builder to understand how this will work from the small hole inside the windmill. It will be connected to a big fennel that will collect as much natural light, sunlight as we could. Is this one you can see from the roof? There are other of these uh, fennels of light. And then from here, get inside this building. So there is a collection of them. You can start seeing the neighborhood. It's an old fisherman's neighborhood next to the Bay of Palma. And here is very strong sun. And what's interesting is that every small element has a, its shadow very strong. So also we understood that this museum, it's this old machine, this windmill was becoming a mills museum and the trespass between this strong light outside and the inside was something that we wanted to work with. Um, this is the neighborhood, very small houses. If we zoom a little bit out, we can see the Bay of Palman, there is the cathedral, it's here. And here is a path, a touristic path. But this project was in the, we could consider it was a possibility to make a link between the passing by of the tourists and the locals living there. So we were wondering how to organize this, also how to organize the entrance. As you have seen, it was a little bit undefined territory. So we decided that from the tourists that will walk this site, I think you, can you see my first one? Yeah. Okay, so they will walk from this side and the neighbors will come from the other side and we organize a small square in the size of the neighborhood. That was not program at all, but we were much concerned of how you get there, how to work somebody from the outside. And part of the program of the museum, like the bar and the toilets, we place them in a small water depot that we could also use for the museum. And we kind of keep the inside of the museum free to make a circulation, we opened the, the tower, we opened a second entrance to the tower so you could go in and then out again and continue circulating. So what was interesting that when we found this building, uh, we, we also found some previous stage of it. And this was the, muse the, the Mills Museum before with the, with the water depot, you can recognize the geometry. And around it, there was uh, little uh, houses attached to it. Also, it's a very interesting situation and thinking that it will become a museum, probably some of these small houses will have been very useful to put a small office or a small other place. But when we arrived there, they had, had already been cleaned. There were no traces of these interesting satellite things. Okay, so we, we managed to work with what we found. But, uh, but all the windows, the houses ha had disappeared, but the windows and different doors of the circulation that was around this uh, windmill were still there. And we decided to keep them all and that they will help us in the sequence of this exhibition inside the museum, that, inside this new museum. And one of the main operations, and you can see in the main on the first position, you can see it here in the photograph, there is a like, layer of earth that it's quite different. This is the level of the existing building that we found to excavate three, uh, one meter lower, but in inches three, well, okay. So like a little bit higher than your knees, we, we excavate down and to have more volume of air as this was a, a, a private house. You see if there were houses and originally this was the storage area of the wind uh, mill owner. So, when you open the model of the project of this project, um, you realize that all the effort is in the perimeter, you know, following these doors and small windows that we found. And that the entrance of the path through the, through the plan of the windmill is kept quite free. 
this wall that you see in the drawing is the entrance wall. And so how we had, we found two doors and we decided to go up from the door on, on the, the, the door on the top of the drawing that you can see in the picture. And is the one that has this chamber of wood. So a chamber to kind of accommodate your eyes from the uh, shiny light on the outside to this uh, twilight you know, of the inside of the museum. So also deciding to go up uh, to enter through one of these, the other door kind of became a, a place for display. But all the windows and even the chimney you can see in the vault, in the stone vault, that there are some traces still of smoke. So we were combining all of them. Even in this case, the chimney works with a, with a small window that you can see in the section up here that we collect the light from the window, make it go down you know, like in a mailbox, a letter will do. And then from here, you will also collect more light. And we were making these artifacts for display fragments of these uh, windmills that are so common in the island. Uh, there was one of the skylights that for us was kind of surprising because this is the end of the circulation through this windmill. You arrive to this small auditorium. This place is like a small pulpito for, to make the, for the, the lecturer will talk from here, but you can see the staircase is, has light. This light, this is something that we discovered in this project and was amazing because when you discover something even, it's not the first time for sure it is discovered, but when you one discover it your, by yourself, it becomes really true and kind of stays in your mind a lot. So this is the not direct light. This is light coming from the North. It's a skylight that is attached to the tower here. And it's the, this is in the shadow, but the fennel connects so much light and we work with it as it, light works as it is what if it was water. So you can conduct it and make it appear in a far away and point and in another direction, like is the case of this um, package that I was showing you. There are some drawings that we made after the construction, like this one. It's more about the action. It's not about the geometry. The building was built. <coughs> This is what we wanted to explain what the project has been about, and it has been about excavating. So we were giving this darkness to the to the materiality of it, like trying to show more the action in this case and the geometry. And there have been other skylights also in Mallorca, like the one here in another project, uh, but in this case they are not excavated. They are built. Yeah, the difference you see the build, the difference between this one that is uh, excavation of a piece of stone, take out some of the mass to fill in with light. In this other case, you you build up the the, the skylight is built up with with walls so, uh, to to funnel the light as well, but it is constructed because it was a um, uh, you know a Mallorcan palace in the center of the city, and the transformation here. Also from this domestic situation of a family living there and, and, and different generations in centuries and centuries that now became a cultural center for the city of Palma. So this transformation again from a private building to a public one makes you make this effort of, of changing the scale perhaps of some of the spaces becoming some, something common, something for many people to use and to, to visit. But in this case, one of the, the important things was how, how not to lose the fascination or the mystery of the layers and layers of the lives of the family that have lived there for many, many, many years and decades and centuries. So how to introduce this public condition without losing the mystery um, that, that they had already when we came into the house. The thing, the most important actions that we did was how to incorporate circ new circulations that were needed, like the one in the in the left in the section. You see this more effective uh, staircase that we needed for the new cultural center to activate the different levels, connecting with with natural light to get the circulation more intuitive. And the other not the other light also came in uh, above of the dome where my cursor is now. Uh, this dome was already existing, and the main staircase of the family was already existing. But what did it didn't ex did not exist was all this chamber to organize light uh, above the existing dome before the, the light was coming inside the oculus and filling all this bo big bottle of, of the space of the of the staircase. Before that, it was going. It is, is able now to come into the all the rooms that are around this dome, like the painting room, the reading room, all the spaces of the cultural, the 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 Beaux Arts uh, 
school, which, which is also in the top of this room of this. So we have two entrance of light, very, a very a vertical, very strong one, like it was like a rain, very, very. <coughs> and in the other side is much, much more soft, horizontal, like a cloud. So it's like air, uh, like wind, that when it gets really tired, gets down into the oculus and fills in all this space. So two, two ways of, of understanding light. So these are the two main actions, even if the rest of the building you also <coughs> need to, adapt to be in a cultural center, but the two main actions are these. And the third one, very important, was how to transform this main patio that at the moment we enter was uh, very, very divided, uh, subdivided with the time, with the, with the different times of the family. They have closed the arches that were here original to with, with walls. So it was only a street, kind of a corridor, a street entry, entering and, and coming up to the house. The rest were shops and different different situations of the city. So how to recuperate this patio as a square for the city again and make a public entry here with a, a gallery, a, uh, exhibition gallery where you could be invited to come in as a public, even if you were, were not coming up to the to the Beaux Arts School or, or the, the the other uh, the library upstairs, etc. So the, this, the, the three actions were this courtyard, giving light to the dome and activating up the upper spaces, and also the, the new shaft with the staircase and elevator in a former patio. This was uh, the only uh, light well that the house had, which is this space. You see here, there was a, the, the light well that we found. And so this is the only possibility to put a, uh, an elevator and a new staircase that could make effective all the levels, the library, the offices, etc. <coughs> so here in this courtyard, these were the new staircase, which is in concrete in this case, with the circulation to the different levels was uh, located with a, an elevator as well. But see the, the size of this the staircase is really huge. It's like a big uh, elephant, if you want, that is not almost not fitting in this space, trying to fight with the light that is coming down. So you are ascending slowly looking for this light and the light is, is coming at the same at the same time very strong near you at certain point you start to understand that you're under the roof the, the shapes of the ceiling is explaining that and then you feel in this moment where you don't know you don't see outside so you are in between the staircase that comes from under and the roof you're in this in between moment this kind of chamber but suddenly you find the door you open it and then you find yourself between those two giants, which are the skylights that hold you in this intermediate space. And then suddenly you are brought into this theater, kind of theater that is surrounded by all the skylights that are giving light to the, the, the underground level. So this, this when you arrive to the upper level, you're in like in the, in the fifth level, and then suddenly you're in the surface of the building. So when you are in the higher level of the building, it's really like the zero level of the building because the, all the rest of the building is like sunken, it's under water, under earth, in fact, with all this light that is coming with the skylights. The streets in this uh, part, very dense part of Palma, are really, really getting uh, the light very complicated to get down. You can see the mass of this part of the old town uh, it's like a compact mass, and then the streets are like cuts of knife in this mass, and the, the light really is not coming in the streets, it's coming in, this, in the central courtyard. The courtyards are the ones which are giving the, the possibility to generate light to the rooms, so these big mouths open to the sky are the ones who are bringing light down to the house. And see here, this is the situation I mentioned before, see the, street, the, the central, the courtyard was not a courtyard, it was kind of a corridor, facing only the, the main staircase at the end of the image now. So we, to unblock, to unblock these uh, arches, there was a lot, a lot of uh, structural work to be done because these arches were not supporting the weight of the building, the pillars were not very well founded, et cetera, et cetera. So there was a lot of uh, structural work to be done before we could take out these walls and unblock the, the arches and liberate the space again. But then, this this uh, this courtyard, this patio became again the kind of a, no, a free spe a space that is an extension of the streets around. This is very common in Mediterranean cities that you are coming into the houses or into the many a public or semi-public buildings that are really extending this, the streets around in continuity without doors or without limits. And this is very important because in a way there's this kind of 
possibility of expanding the public space inside the buildings again. So you see you enter in this main door and then you have all this party for different activities. You, have, you can enter into the gallery for looking into a, an exhibition or come out back in the bar, in the new bar that is there or coming up into the house museum, the, the, all the cultural activities above, the library, the painting rooms and all that. So see, this is, this is how you can, you see, see at the end of the image, you can see to the left, all these series of skylights that are more the vertical light as mentioned before and more in the center you see the dome with have this have, have this other kind of light uh, more soft which is uh, in between up up in the upper rooms and below in the main staircase but this uh, this patio now you see is an invitation everyone can come in again and recuperates the, this public and civic condition that the building had once three or four hundred years ago when it was start, uh, first done or first built this courtyard this baroque situation around the around this central courtyard that later later it lost with the pass of the time now it's opening again so um, the sequence of entry for, to the right you have the main street the big street the kind of the big avenue and then you come in and then you have this sequence of shadow and because you pass under the porch, then you have the light of the court and the shadow again, the light again. And when you arrive, you're arriving to the end of this promenade from the from the street to the, you're starting to, to climb the main staircase to the main level of the house. Then you see, look up and then you see the, the hole in the dome that I mentioned, but you, you see the light coming in, but you don't see the source of the light. And this is very important because it's giving this depth, but it's not, the, it's not clear where it is most, much, much more mysterious because you don't know where the light is, is providing. And before that, we when we arrived, see, and at the end of the dome, it was this lintern with this glass and, and metal lintern that was uh, funneling the light into the dome only. And the rest, the roof was just canceling the rest of the dome was uh, a place where you could never go. So when we started to take out all these tiles to repair this roof that was of course, not com uh, it, the building was in a very bad condition because it was not connecting the Baroque part with the medieval part. See, the connections are very bad, so they were it was leaking. It was very in a very very bad state. So we take out this roof, and then we discover the possibilities of working with this dome from above. And so we said, that what if instead of letting the light come inside the dome immediately, we start to build these chambers that the light could be that divided in a way. So that a bit of the light goes into the library, a bit of the light to the to the painting room, and so on. So in a way, acts like, a, like in a way is is a, like a compass. You no, know, the light is is uh, guiding you when you are under this roof. You are guide, guided by the light that comes before it gets into the into the into the oculus. So when you are walking there and you are into the library, you see these bits bits of dome that are like a huge whale in a way appears in your way and guides you and you understand that you are walking around the dome and it appears and disappears like the compass as i said you're under this big big roof like under a roof or, or, or the deck of a ship and you don't see outside but you understand that you are right under the sky and then you see the dome in that in that door and you say maybe I can go in there and I can see what's going on in there. And then suddenly you discover this space that was hidden and was not, uh, not uh, possible to come in before. Is this kind of chamber that are between outside and inside. There are these kind of uh, spaces in between, like in the Mills Museum that Eva was explaining, these chambers that are in the thickness of the, in, of the wall, that are nor the exterior nor the interior, but are this, this kind of double spaces that appear, these pocket spaces. So this one, you can walk in the light and you are in a space that nobody accesses because you're in the back of the dome and then suddenly you enter into the medieval room and so on. So the, the, the other, and there's another more recent project that also works with this situation, which is this half dome that had been stolen to the roof because the roof was, of course, with all these, these uh, little domes that go into the wall, but then suddenly you, you cut out this big uh, piece of half uh, half a, a dome and then the light come inflates it and enunciates the light from from to the rest of the building this is the sala Beckett project in barcelona a more recent a drama center a more recent project and then uh, this also works with the the situation of having the light in between outside and inside and, and making it work like a mailbox also coming from a source that you don't see uh, at the beginning 
this project starts it's very interesting it was a very interesting project for us because get us in get, got us in contact with the world of the theater for the first time the man which is in front of samuel beckett the irish playwright was a, a, he's called Tony Casares, is the director of this place called Sala Beckett. It's a drama center in Barcelona that existed far be, before we arrived to this commission. This commission, uh, it was a competition that this man and the group of Sala Beckett launched because they were forced to leave the place where they were working for many, many years. So they asked the municipality in Barcelona help for, for a place where they could have the new home, the new headquarters. So they had this very, very long story in working with theater, but they don't have a house, they didn't have a house. And in the other side of the story, is, it was this place, which was the former workers cooperative in Barcelona, also abandoned for 30 years. This is 2010, I'm talking about. So this was in the, in the it was a, a cooperative that was very active in neighborhood that was a workers um, neighborhood with lots of factories, industrial and worker uh, class uh, families and so on. So the cooperative was this place where they used to meet and, and celebrate and, and you know sh share the problems and joys, etc. It was a place for the workers to have their spare time. And then this this building became became less and less you know in, interesting for for the for the neighbors and then it, it got it got closed sometime in the 80s and it got abandoned as i said it was almost in a ruin as you can see when they got, so what happens is that the municipality offered this building to salaveke they say well you could move in but let's make a competition for for ho for hosting for adapting the building to your needs or to your program so this is the the competition that we won to transform this building into the new Sala Beckett building. This is the cooperative. The cooperative uh, Power Justicia was very you know, active in, in this neighborhood for the whole uh, 20th century, well, from 1920s to the 80s, but it was a big, big important time because it was a dictatorship, uh, I mean, a, a very important moment, a social moment in, in, in Spain and in Catalonia. It had a very interesting upper level for social, you know, you had this, this upper level was more for leisure and the lower level was a grocery store, big grocery store where the, the workers had a share. So for everything that was sold there, they could have some, some little shares or something to earn as well. So it was very well organized for them. So the upper level had these spaces, which were really fantastic. You see huge, very high, with beautiful pavements and the wind, windows, uh, natural light all over, of course, with this, these windows doors that you see in the image have more than four meters of height. These are really, really general spaces. And uh, the grocery store also was fantastic with uh, you know, have very six meters of height, the marble in the counter, you know, metal for leaning your bag and the pavement, of course, again, very beautiful look at the things they were selling all the ham everything was a kind of a paradise place and natural light very tall pillars to the right of the image you can see very slim slender and, and tall pillars of uh, iron cast so it was really a very very beautiful space and then but then at a certain point what happened with this building is that uh, when they ran bankrupt they have they tried in between the 80s and the 90s and 2000 they try a few things to make it work in between among them a supermarket then a sauna gym and this and that and what happened with this space is that they destroy this space especially in the ground floor level all this decoration disappears and when we enter the building for the competition in 2011 this same space was like that was no traces of the grocery store, no, no traces of the pavement, molders, uh, materials, counters, nothing, not even windows. There were no windows, all was blocked, all about mirrors. The pillars, the slender pillars were becoming uh, full of bricks and mirrors and so on. So it was a re really uh, de de depressive space to, to walk. Um, there, there were some mezzanines added uh, with with the private spaces, etc. Whatever you want to imagine there, we don't we don't want to imagine what happened there. Anyway, the sauna pool with all this you know uh, decoration, very um, kitsch, very pro probably very useful at the moment, but not interesting for us at all. But when you could uh, go up into the, it, it was a little circuit that we took. And then suddenly we discovered the upper, the upper, the upper uh, level with the former theater, the former cafe, 
and it, the state was really in a early condition, but this really was really fascinating to see this, the space, even in a, so such a bad condition. The building was not listed, was not protected. So in the competition, you could decide to demolish it and make the, a new drama center here. Because seeing all this, you could uh, ask yourself, should I keep this ruin and, and use it for the future uh, uh, drama center, or should I start all over? Because also, you know, the activities of contemporary theater have a lot of uh, very, you know, um, co uh, com complex conditions of acoustics, uh, climate, of course, uh, lightning, yes. and so. Uh, uh, sorry, yeah. uh, plus Sala Beckett also is, is, a, is a theater that works in uh, with silence, with words, so it needs uh, complete silence at a certain point. So we, we were wondering if this building was uh, going to accept all this transformation. But then when we saw these spaces that were still with all the remains of the neighbors that have been uh, here all so many years and living here and were you know making activities, all these families that still were around uh, and all these traces in the walls, we thought that this ruin had to stay. We, for us, it was very important because the building it was not just a physical heritage to save, but more about the social heritage for us, all the memories yeah. and, the, and, the, um, and the lives, and as I said, the stories that have happened here, all the emotional, the emotional condition that the, the building was keeping for us was very important. So in fact, when you decide to keep the building and make your proposal in the competition out of this ruin, and that the ruin will be part of the future Salavec, and this is really the beginning of your project because you're saying, yes, I will keep it and I will make it part, but that contains a lot of, of course, challenge because you have to make that the ruin is still there when it finishes, is working acoustically and technically perfect. And at the same time, all the ghosts and all the memories and all the stories that were there are kept in the place. So when we won the competition, the first thing we, do, we did is try to make, make a big inventory, a big um, collection of all the elements that were saved at the moment of winning the competition that was still at many doors and windows and, you know, see the pavements, lamps, uh, handrails, steps of the, of the staircases, everything that we could find, we start to draw it, but draw it very, very carefully to try to understand it and bring it to our office, to try to, to, to have it with us, to make it really part of the project. We didn't know where things were going to be, but we wanted to be, we wanted everything to be in the future project. So the first thing we did is to, to observe everything very, very careful with a lot of intensity to uh, each of these drawings, as you see, were an A0 size, very, very big, so they could contain all the information that we needed to put in, all the observations, and then uh, make it very, you know, detailed, uh, saying us what material was there, what the, you know, uh, the colors of the glasses, etc. And so we did more than a hundred of these drawings with not only, as I said, windows and doors, but pavements and lamps and roses, etc. And then, of course, then that these become models where you can work in one to 50 scale, for example, more, more pieces that you could use in the office. Each of the pieces have the number of the inventory. The F03 is fenêtre, is the, the fenster, the window 03. So it's um, something that you could uh, trace that tra track uh, in, the, in the big inventory and see how it is. And then these start to be useful for you in the, in the big model. And so you start to make it work you know, the bigger ones, the more important ones can go to festivals, the smaller ones can go, you know, maybe to the offices or to the dressing rooms of the actors and so on and so forth. The, the different qualities of the elements were telling you in a way or inspiring you to put them somewhere uh, specifically, if they had glass, if they had not, depending on the kind of the partitions, the lattice, and, and so on. So uh, also it happened that when you start to touch them and clean them or, or see some of the repair them, you see that there are some colors in, in them that you could really use as well or paint them depending on, on the original colors that they had. So it was very, very beautiful, very complex work, how to reuse all these elements in different parts of the new project, depending on the, how the program was asking you for the new, the new uh, uh, drama center. I will show you also another video now that shows how the things were moving in, in our head and in the spaces. 
it's called um, 44 doors and 25 windows for the new Salah Beckett. And it shows to the left the initial state of the, what we found in the first floor. And this is the project to the right. So some of the elements were staying where they were, like in the facade, for example. Sometimes you change the color, but they stay where they are. Some others, they stay in the first floor, but they move from position because, of course, the divisions of the, the, of the partitions of the rooms are different. The staircase of the bar goes to the classes. Some of the doors uh, come, come also to the offices. Uh, some of the uh, some others can stay in the area of the, of the former cafe, but now becomes a rehearsal room. So they don't need so many of these big doors. They change color. But you see, when when you finish up with the first floor, there are many still that you can reuse. So some of the doors of the former cafe could go into the new cafe, which is in the ground floor level now dividing the lobby with the, with the restaurant in the ground floor and uh, you know, the, the doors of the former dressing room in the, in the former theater go to the new dressing room. Some other doors go to the public toilets with, the, with light uh, glass to, to have light through and so on. The plafond in the area of the, the school of the kids, of the workers now go to the secretary, to the administrative part to hold things behind. Some of them, when they arrive, to the new place, they change color and sometimes they change size. They, mod they are modified because they become bigger or smaller, depends how they adapt. But all of them were kept. The, most of them, the, the more than 90% of the doors and windows were kept. None of them were thrown away, except if they were in a so bad state that you could not really recover them. But you see the, the, the modification of of colors or, or sizes or adaptations that you know, use. But see how they are really uh, very interesting characters because they were different. All of them were different. So in a way they were telling you uh, some character that, that could guide you to see where you wanted to put it, where, where if it was an important door, maybe you put it in the vestibule, if it was a more humble door, let's say, or you know, blind one, you put more in storage in an area where you can see through and so on. So the, the, the doors and the windows themselves were in a way inspiring you for this, for this uh, selection of choosing where to put them. This was very, very uh, intense and very complex, as you can understand, so, having so many pieces in, in your head and deciding where to put them. But then at the end, they fit, they, they help you because they bring all the time, the accumulated time of decades of being used into the new building. Like also the walls, we of course uh, made the, the survey of all the walls that were, we found it, as we found it, even if in a very bad state, the painting, etc. But for us it was also already uh, something that we, we had to keep, as you see in the model here. So this is the model already of the proposal where the, the, all the building is working connected uh, upstairs and downstairs see these two big holes in the hundreds in the in that are leaving light through are connecting the two levels so the grocery stores now is a public the public part of the sala vacant with the restaurant the offices the new theater and the upper level <coughs> the former uh, leisure part is rehearsed is more the formative part of the school is uh, rehearsal rooms uh, studios and you know studios for for learning to write theater and to direct theater and all, all those things. See this, if I can show you briefly that the program in the left was is just found state, what we found, the gym, you see, can you see the bar with, you know, with the, with the mirrors uh, in the corner and then all the showers and the pool and all that. But you see that the staircase was straight going from the street straight going up in the center of the plan. And this was very important, how to liberate this center. If you look in the right, this staircase is not there anymore, it's more inside the plan. And that's crucial because then you allow everyone to come in. So you enter in the center of the, in the vestibule, in the center part, in the center of street, let's say, uh, passage. So to the left, you have the offices with the tickets, or they, they show you if there's a workshop you want to join, etc. And to the right, you have the bar, the restaurant. So all this corner to the right is public. So you enter, you have a sofa with this shape, and then you have the, you know, to come, come around and you go to the toilets or to the bar and so on. All that's the public area. Whilst in the, here, you have the more private part. You have the offices, and then the, the actors, they say hello in the morning, they come in, in this door, not in the main one, in this one, and they go straight to the dressing room. 
to study their play and all that. So in the meantime, you are waiting here. <coughs> you, you collect your ticket and you can wait in the bar or in the sofa. And then suddenly, when the play is going to start, you come in, in this door and then uh, the actor also comes into this into the into the, into play and they meet all of them meet in the main in the main room uh in the, there's a third entry here <coughs> a third one yeah I think. which is yeah thank you this one is for the technicians and as you can see there are two corridors they can go they can go around the main theater without crossing with the public yeah so there's a more hidden one so it's interesting because there are three part three x three let's say part the public the, the actors and the technicians and you can uh, the public don't see them they don't cross they don't cross each other this is very important in the theater the world let's say that the actors are independent and they are not seen by the public and they can move around so this is very fun to draw all the circulation so you see you enter you collect your tickets in the box office and then or you wait in the sofa or you make a queue already for the play that is going to start in this in the main theater space, or else you go upstairs to have a, one of the workshops in the classes or in the rehearsal room and all that. See, also you have um, two levels of dressing room: the dressing room of the actors that are playing in the in the main theaters, the downstairs theater space, or these other actors that are uh, going to play in, in this in the former theater that now is connected here. So these actors are playing here while these one are playing here. And so the, the circulation is really fun because uh, this is what we inherited. You see the, the former theater, the former cafe, as you saw, the school of the kids and all that. And now you enter, you come up with guided by the light, the skylight that you saw before. And then you end you you have all this court here, which is also full of light, which guides you also to the to the classes here or you come to the rehearsal room, or you queue here because you're going to see a play here. So, uh, but in the meantime, the actors move here, you see in this staircase or in this staircase or in these chambers, and they appear from here or from here or from here behind. So is this double circulation or triple, this kind of situation that you don't, you have several uh, kind of layers of backstages and that the actors and public and technicians are moving without seeing each other, which is really the most fascinating thing to draw in, in the theater. I will show you in a short video again where these circulations happen because I think you, you will understand it better. You see, the actor is, is coming into this door that I show you, a different to the public. No? You see, the actor is, hi is, hi is hidden there, doesn't want to see the public now, so goes into the office. You pick up your tickets. You go to the bar to meet some friend or go to the sofa, maybe. In the meantime, the actor goes to the, to the dressing room, to the changing room to start the play. We have this situation that the actor is in, in the changing room studying. In the meantime, the public is enjoying their the time outside without knowing that behind that wall, if someone is panicking to, to forget the play. They may be in the green room of the upstairs because they are going to happen. Today, there's a play in the upstairs theater, so you queue here. And then there's the third, the third party, I said before, the technician, who is very important. It goes to the control cabin. You can select it in there. See the configuration of, of the style of the room and the public, uh, the public and actors is changing all the time. Depends on the play. So the, the public is located differently every two, three weeks. Is very important in these rooms that are very flexible. And at the end of the show, uh, very, very, it's very important that, that the, then the actor goes out and then, yes, they meet the public and they can chat for a while together with the technician. Everyone meets in the vestibule. Now that everything is finished, everyone is happy and then they go out, the three of them, uh, to talk and to smoke or whatever in the, in the balcony yeah, and, and make friends. <coughs> Thank you.
now I will go slightly backwards and go back to the construction moment in Sarabeke. This was a very economic building, so we, we had to reinforce all the foundations also for the activities had been closed for 30 years and we have to put it in actual codes. We had these big machines around and these were very thin walls coming up 12 meters. And when you work in re uh, rehabilitation or reuse of buildings, it's amazing how the first month you kind of accelerate the ruin and the building gets really very weak no? somehow. And even you cannot recognize this uh, cooperative, this work, workers cooperative building that you like so much also because all the doors have been taken away, identify and go into a warehouse while the, the works is going, the construction is going on. Also in the, we are collecting all these uh, tiles, all these in the floors. Previously we have made all the drawings and then by drawing them, we realize how they work as carpets. As you can see the drawing doesn't touch the edges and all these is like a carpet that you have a special um, scene, a special drawing at the edge to make all the perimeter. So we are collecting this material and we have also take it, we take it out and we have to reinforce structurally is this pieces of steel that you see, we have a 10 centimeters concrete sl uh, slab to reinforce it for stability reasons. All the first floor gets reinforced. And then on the ground floor level, back to this old swimming pool, we are excavating again to bring more volume to the main room, the theater room downstairs. Also this theater room kind of took a lot of the, the budget we have for the project as we had to excavate it and first thing excavate it. And then second, to make it wider, uh, the workers cooperative had this span of 11 meters, always maximum, and we needed 15. So we need some more, we have to take out this wall and uh, put these huge beams you see here and some new foundations for them stop for these porticos, all this is new. And then here, as you can see this beam is where this wall that I showed you in the previous slide was here. So to dismantle it, we have to support a wall that is upstairs. So why all this main operation is because the theater people were interested in having different relationships within the scenario and the public. And then, Yes, you see here we have the frontal, the more as we are now, you know, the more classical way. But it could be that the public is in both sides. It can be that they use the long uh, or they use like a ring box. And for to make all this floor being kind of the, all these possibilities also, you can see there are doors that actors and technicians can get in through different corners, even from here. So to give this flexibility. Also, we, we made some big models and we had discussions in, uh, in the studio with the director and friends, other theater directors coming in to discuss the Salabiket because it is theater of words and without microphones. They were very much concerned with the, the connection between the public eye and the actor's eye. They didn't want to grow a lot of lines. So maximum is 200 people in this room downstairs. And these models that help us in talking with the directors also are really useful when we have to deal with the technicians. In this case, there were um, is a technician that was going to make all the air conditioning, and we want to make sure that the pies will be organized in order. So we had this model in one to twenty five, and it was very useful also to bring it to the and show it to him to make sure that we wanted something like this for sure. So. Then it was organized, here is finished. It was uh, painted black as uh, was a decision. One of the rooms is black, the other one will keep the old colors. And the two rooms that we have, the theater downstairs, a new one, and the old one that changed proportion. It's not so long as it used to be, but as you can see, they overlap at a certain moment. So there was also one of the investments, important budget it was to make this isolation between the two rooms. So the old theater, we changed the, well, it has the importance of stability, but also used to be with tiles, and these tiles have become wood. Uh, so there, there was uh, quite a lot of, set of layers because we have the stability layer plus the acoustic layer. All of it make like 25 centimeters in plus for here. And they prefer to have in the theater rooms and in the rehearsal rooms and in the classes, they prefer to have wood it's much more comfortable and also they can nail some small decoration if they need it on the floor. So this was a former bar, now it's a rehearsal room. And 
these two drawings that you can see on, on the left, you have the, the pavements, the, the invent, the register of how the pav pavements used to be, these tiles that we found here, and the finished one, and the, all these black areas or the green ones is wood. So all this yellow that we found in the old school uh, was in the, now it's in all the public space. And also the one we found in the former bar, now a rehearsal room, it's in the central corridor. So we have a, a lot of tiles here in the old theater that was super long to use them on the ground floor level, to put them in the public spaces of the ground floor level, as again, the theater is out of wood. So uh, this, we, we use a lot of these tiles. And as you can see, we use them as we learn from the drawings we made, with, we use them with uh, the edges, these uh, special edges before the, these tiles touches the, the wall. To make these shapes, uh, these kind of circular shapes in these edges, we first we try in one-to-one -one with paper to make sure that we will not lose the drawing of this leaf that you see here. And before we did it in paper, then we asked the builder to do it. Yeah, then we saw that it was working. So we had all these edges that make the draw the circulation around the buildings. And also the new floor slab that we have to be built to stabilize the two main warehouses. Uh, the, you can see there are holes that connect vertically the ground floor level with the first level, but also these holes kind of turn at the other side of the wall. So these spaces adjacent or next to the main vestibule also have this kind of connection. They are help us in articulating these spaces at the other side of the wall. So there is this wall that you see in the picture that it's very uh, protagonist that you can see also in here in the section. And this wall is the one that has this central skylight, kind of is uh, very much the center of the building. And this uh, a, a long perspective that you see towards this uh, skylight. As you enter into the building, you make two steps and you can see you know, the light coming from the up here. Hmm? But you don't see the source of light. I come back to the picture, you see. But, uh, and how, how it works, you know, we, we excavate, we make a hole in the wall. Previously, we wanted to make it a circular one, but there is a, a truss, truss of wood, you can see in orange there in the drawing. And we have to provide these angles to distribute the charges. So we have to be happy with the half moon here that we break. You can see it's a very thin wall that comes so high as you know, this, yeah, 14 meters almost. And the floor slab that we also cut. So there was a lot of uh, uh, also the, to work with the material that we found, no? making holes in it. So here is the drawing of the moon. It doesn't make any sense when we are building it because you can see we are breaking a wall, but there's no light coming from yet from the other side. We are building the bolt here also. And it was great to have these carpenters uh, working with us in the construction. They made this form for this, but also they were moving from room to room in the building and adjusting all the doors and windows also because we the level of this first floor has been raised. So there were 25, meter, 25 centimeters to cut from every window. And with them, we were deciding when. Some of the windows and doors were storage in the same building. And as you can see here, some of them, even like these brown ones were existing and they want to make the, we want to make the connection with the vestibule and the bar. And here it was the two windows, even they are very big, were not even enough for the height of this building. So we added some parts and you can see that they, to help and having more connection, visual connection between vestibule and bar. And when the building was almost finished, then we, we kind of, we were discussing how we can paint it or how we paint it, how you paint a ruin that has so much information. Are we going to apply a color, the same color for the new walls? How we do this? We're looking at the building and we take decisions, not like a general one, but, but looking at each situation. And we decided to apply the color also in fragments. So when you walk around the building, you get like the same amount of information, your eyes get the same amount of input as you move in, because we wanted really to mix um, all the, the different chapters of life of this building, not to make a distance. So now it's kind of difficult to know what was there, what, what was not there. 
the first floor is the most private one with the students and also one theater here. It's can be very quiet in the morning. Then there are some breaks that the students go out and they cross and also teachers can cross and this wall makes it very kind of quickly uh, encounters you know, when you cross from one side to the other, someone can appear on the other side. Then going, when it gets through towards the evening, the, the theater starts and there can be a show on the theater upstairs and the theater downstairs. So students cross with the public. And this is a situation that the director of Salabeket was very keen on having to mix uh, formation, creation and exhibition to make it happen in a very casual way. And this kind of casual way of mixing these different phases of, uh, of creation, of theater creation. Also, we draw, it's kind of reflected in this drawing, as you can see that we have a theater upstairs and the door of this theater is open, this double door that we have to build for acoustics. And then you will get into this vestibule, from the vestibule, the staircase down into the bar and then into the street. <coughs> This is a building in a corner. We want to, it's very special to have a corner in the city. So we want to draw this corner and to express that from the theater to the street, there will be this connection. Also because Salabirkate makes place or show place that are uh, written, for the, written for the first time and very much connected with problems and things that uh, we can hear in the street. So this connection with the street also had to do with the first play that they performed in this theater when it was open <clears throat> and had to do with the neighbors that were still around and that were former cooperativists and had memories of having been in the building for a long, long time. And is a theater director <clears throat> that when the, the building was finished, he came to us one day and said, I'm gonna make with my theater students an exercise very much related with what you have done as architect with this building. You have played with the elements of it, with the memory of the building. You have played and uh, moved it around. Uh, so like making a fiction of what you found you know, and, and building a new memory for this building. I'm gonna do the same, with, but with the memory of the former cooperativist and the memories they have on this building. So he, he make, he organize a call and he get like 50 former cooperatives that came for two uh, Saturdays to have a coffee with these uh, theater students, explain them stories related to their life in this building. And then after two months, they have made fictions out of these memories and they represent them uh, around the building. So the whole building was like a theater right? in the vestibule, but also in the dressing rooms, in the patio, there was a scene talking about the showers in, in so it was really, very nice. So somehow these former cooperatives were coming back to their house, but also theater people was already in their house. So there was this mix of two generations that had been occupying the building. So there was this celebration, was this moment, like the new thing is going to start, like when you go to a theater and the <coughs> speaker you know, tells you, attention, attention, now the show is about to start. Escenari de cartró que va quedar dipositat davant teu damunt les classades. Tenia un calor caigut i em va indicar que tu mateix l'aixequessis. I així vas descobrir tant com nosaltres descobrim ara tot un univers de rompiments i talons pintats i el cel, un paisatge infinit dins d'una capsa, un cap de personatges entrant en aquell àmbit hieràtics, però bonicos gràcies a unes mitges de transportors. Un moment abans de decidir-te, un moment abans de donar ordre, Contemplaves l'escenari com ho tornes a fer ara i resolies que tot aquest bonit incipient de formes, figures i colors podia ser la cosa més bonica del món. I és així com et vas perdre, perquè t'havies fitat massa dins, 
i quan el taló es va tancar com un pare es va tancar Okay. Thank you. Questions, comments, anybody? <laughs> Questions, go ahead. Uh, hi, can you hear me? Yes, of course. Yes. Hi, uh, my name is Matthew. I'm a second year Bachelor of Architecture student. Um, I really admire the playfulness and kind of discovery process that you guys go through in your drawings as well. And I'm really curious to hear how you maintain that level of playful energy because it's very evident even in your final models and drawings. How do you maintain that through so many iterations all the way through the entire process? Uh, you, you <laughs> Sorry, uh, could you repeat the uh, again? Uh, can can you may, maybe you can get closer to the microphone because there are some parts or. Does the microphone somewhere? So, <laughs> so uh, I'm very, I admire how your playfulness and creativity uh, remains consistent throughout your process and how that's very evident in your final models and drawings. So is it possible if you could speak about how you maintain that level of creativity throughout the process? <coughs> well, uh, it's the discipline. <laughs> so it's, it's, way, it's the way, the only way we know to get to, to, to work. And not to get to the yes. Yeah. Well, I think I think uh, maybe your question is more related to the the material that you saw that now is linked uh, to show like an like a, to form a narrative in a way of the projects, also a big a bigger narrative related to the different projects that that had to do with reuse with adaptive reuse, uh, how we started and which interests link them together. Finishing with the one of Salabek, perhaps is more complete to understand a more process. All this material is collected um, through many, many. It's done in many years, different times and different moments. No, but I think it's very interesting that they keep around you, or in a way helping you to to remind some interest, some ways of you know getting close to some things that interest you and how you collect that interest in a way. When you are working in a project, sometimes you, you when you have a, uh, you are, uh, you know, fascinated by something or inspired by something, it's, for us it's important to document that, collect that or record that moment, being that a drawing, a model or something, even if the project is not asking for that, that document. But that document is important for you to remind you that moment in time where you were interested in, uh, you know, the, the passage of the light through some specific part or, or, or the connection of the outer space and the inner space on some, in some specific way. Uh, so th this, all these documents in a way remind you, uh, they are collecting that moment. Uh, they, are, they are registering that, that moment. No? Mm -hmm. So when you see them now together connected with other models that are also talking about similar things and that, they at the end, they make a kind of a, a bigger a bigger narrative body. but of yeah work. a body of work yeah but i think also the the project you now in the studio and usually uh, you know, one of these there are many all these are public commissions and they take quite time but they are minimum like five six years of work so it's the same time of your studies but your studies will take more or less so when you put together all the work you've done at university at the end probably you know it will look very much uh, an effort but also probably because we work we keep working manually because we we enjoy it and it, it's helpful for us also probably this work the manual work also have this um, kind of density in it more or you can read more the effort in it so i think it has a depth that maybe also it looks more um effort in it but it's the same one no but uh, visually probably it looks stronger Thank you. I don't know if we yeah. answer your question. Thank you for the question. I don't know if the, confuse, you're happy with the answer. We confuse you more now. <laughs> <laughs> can, can I ask a follow-up question connected? Can you hear me? 
Yes, yes, yes. Marcus, thank you so much for coming and, and showing this work. I feel like our, our department has such a kindred relationship with um, your commitment to the hand, to drawing. Um, but I'd like to ask a question about the delight, and, the, and that's where it connects to, to Matthews. There's so much delight evident in not only the work, um, but the process and the final building result. Um, I know you work with students. Is delight something that you can pass along to a student? Is delight something that you can teach to a student through doing architecture? Delight. Uh, you mean delight or the light? Delight. Delight. Delightfulness. 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 Yeah. Uh, how, how, how would you translate that to us? I'll, um, um, I'll play the. Play it, yeah. play. I'll play. Um, it's good that you, uh, if you read um, delightful, no, also to be in a school, no, it's nice. I mean, but um, yeah, there is delightful also because it's a way of um, within architecture is um, you have a lot of responsibility by building something, and it takes time to put all things together to work with the engineers. So um, yeah, I think it's something that you have to dedicate a lot of hours to <clears throat> to make a building work. Properly, so and how do you dedicate your your life? No, it's, it's, so a, then it's, it's a, a discipline that you spend <clears throat> most of your time. So, so I think it's good, like uh, yeah, yeah, to put some delight in it. If not, I think you will not stand so many hours and so many construction uh, crises and difficulties because also it's it's kind of work that is very interesting but also in it has these two sides in the office you are quiet and you can concentrate and produce all this material and in construction side your drawings of the project is in hands of another team of people that are able to build it but sometimes they have not the same interest of you so there are a lot of uh, tension moments so i think also this makes you more aware that you really want to have nice things around you to kind of to to help you go ahead with uh, any difficulties. Also, I think it's interesting uh, for us. It's important, very important that this for our students, uh, when we are with them, uh, that they uh, can also think that the of the office or the work in the office is like uh, the work they make now when they are they are students. You know, there there is not a change from the moment they are students to the, when they become an architect and then suddenly all the all the joy the playfulness of being with the with the drawings with the models etc they disappear and then suddenly they are professionals and then they, everything changes and that that's not the way i mean you can have your office still with all this material around you and dedicate the office to a, as a place where you can yes, and and uh, research and fail and uh, you know and go back forth and enjoy that moment of the create the creative moment as you are now doing it in your school is the same situation we are in the office but they, then, then of course you need to to make the things uh, you know buildable and you have other responsibilities but the character of the office is the same you know? so in a way that's something that we like the students to be aware that they can extend the way they are now in the school into their offices without uh, li um, leaving behind all this joy that they're having as a students in a way. But it's the same also the students, no? you have uh, mm. uh, doubts, no? you are concerned, mm, that's what I mean. but also if you move forward and you are able to spend one night you know, drawing because you have a deadline next morning, I think also it's because you, you care you know, and you are committed. So, uh, that's something that can happen when you study architecture. You, you are okay with dedicating hours and discovering things. Can I ask you a question about the presentation? I mean, there were there were several moments in which you were talking about theater, fiction, things like that. You know, and um, and it felt to me that at, um, the way you um, formalize certain elements actually has this kind of theatrical aspect, you know, um, whether it's a skylight, whether it's a, a bench, whether it's a window, whether it's a, um, a sofa. Um, and it's perhaps not a coincidence. It's almost like an, a form of animism, you know, the, the way in which you choreograph your uh, spaces, but also the way in which you choreograph the presentations, you know, and how everything kind of plays together. 
And I was wondering if you think that that um, the Sala Beckett, in a way, was a really unique moment in which your interest in certain aspects of architecture, uh, in which almost architectural elements become actors in themselves within space, um, kind of had the opportunity also to match with the program of the theater. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's a good question. Yeah. You uh, no, yes, I think I think what one of the most fascinating uh, uh, yes, the, I think your comment is very appropriate because in fact the um, the Salabeket project uh, co co uh, condenses many of the interests that we have brought from before and and there one of the most interesting things is was how to make that the whole building was um, full of theater, not just the rooms that were dedicated to dramaturgy that to to make theater like the big the big theater spaces and rooms for rehearsal room, but everything is is like the, the, the like the activity have exploded and, and filled it all all the building you know and that was very nice to think and to to draw because in a way you were thinking how all these activities could happen everywhere but i, I think it's um it's something that you um uh, work uh, constantly with the, with the el helping with the elements that you find in the, in the in there. I think there's something very interesting in reuse, which is all the clues and the um, the inspiration that the existing building can give you, and how all the mystery the mysteries and the stories that you find hidden there, and you really imagine that could happen there, and then how you activate them again for your project. That I think is very beautiful. It's like if you inherit your grandmother's house. And then is this beautiful big, big house full of rooms that sometimes you never came in because they were, you know, uh, mysterious uh, rooms and are full of stories in there. And you don't want to break to, to make these rooms disappear. You want them to keep them there. So when you uh, change this, this building into another use, because your grandmother is not there anymore, you, you don't want that the ghosts leave the place. And I think this is something that only happens with reuse, with all the stories contained in the places that in a way spark your imagination at the beginning and then make you move. So the program is there for, for helping you to draw, but the building is also there for saying, yeah, I have a lot to say, yeah, you know, I have a lot of stories to tell you. And in a way, also that I have a lot of importance. So in a way, it's like a conversation between you and your experience and your own memories and your own interests and your own, uh, you know, fantasies or interests. And then the building with its own stories and the program of someone who wants to use it now, to, to use it now. So I think all, all together, yeah, there's a lot of fiction there, in a way, mixed. And, and this is what uh, what fascinates us uh, as the most in a way. Yeah, for us, in fact, to to work, we work a lot with clients. We we need them a lot uh, to know what to draw, you know, what they want, how to adapt the existing building. So we get information from the building, but a lot from them. So yeah, in this sense, uh, Sala Baker also was was a very special client because theater people they work with emotions. And um, the director also was used to talk, to work with creativity people. So they give he gave us a very clear information of what how they work. Also because he had been doing it for twenty years, so he had a lot of information of how they want how they want to work. But at the same time, he leave you work by yourself. But there were a lot of affinities. Also, they are used to work with models. He really enjoy coming to the office with his friends and looking at the models and making these working sessions. So yeah, it was uh, somehow it was very nice. Suddenly you work with someone that uh, there was a lot of uh, affinities, a lot with the other people. Yeah. yeah, also because they like this kind of, uh, uh, they contempt this kind of yeah. people of this theater is not commercial theater. Is the theater that likes to to test and rehearse and and, and fail and try again as you know uh, so all this all, all this there was a lot of affinity because it was our way of working and their way of working so it was a lot of connection there so they were enjoying us uh, trying with the models and testing on site and making one to one pieces there to show them and all this the risk this this director was bringing a lot of risk during the construction site, in fact, because he was asking us to change things or to test things 
in the middle of the construction site which is very very inconvenient so, you know if you know what i mean with the builder is there uh, wait, waiting for for the first thing to change to to charge you with whatever money so he was coming into the ah well, why if we so it was really fascinating to see the director himself uh, challenging you with new things to try and test in the construction site and we were fascinated uh, with this challenge and at the same time trying to surf it with the, with the builder and other so it was a, a very intense uh, few years of of work with that Who else has a question? <laughs> there was something in the chat from a friend of theirs. I don't know if they saw it. Um, let's see the chat. Something in the chat. Yeah. You want me? Could you read it? You know. Okay. Ah, Diego. Yeah, Diego, Diego Alberto Rodriguez. Diego Rodriguez. Are you around? Is this gonna? Yeah. I hear you. But are you reading it also? Can you see it? Maybe maybe he's not there anymore. Or yeah, I think he left. It's a question about meaning and use. Um, uh, I wanted to say hello from Monterrey and maybe ask you to share your thought regarding the idea of extending the original meaning or significance of a building to a new use or activities. Hmm. The relationship between meaning and use would be the question. Meaning and use. Meaning and use. I think maybe we answer already, but uh. hmm. maybe. Yes, but we, we work a lot uh, with existing buildings since the beginning of our um, having the studio together with Ricardo. And we enjoy it. Uh, we enjoy it because of many reasons. Maybe one of them is that when you work with a building that it's already there, you can never have a strategy because the building will teach you. You go, you visit it, and you try to understand it, and you take you observe it, you know, things that other people have done. Uh, you have sometimes you don't know the architect. And it, there are traces of ways of using it. So all these things are very interesting. And also we like this idea of not um, you know, the way of not, not answering immediately to things, not, not give solution. In the school, you are used not to, there is an exercise, you have to solve it. You have three weeks, four weeks, maybe six weeks. Um, okay, there is a time pressure, but we want to spend a few months first and getting to know the things. And we like this kind of observation because we think that it avoids having strategies is one thing. Other is that we think that when you work with something that already has had a life, you are adding this life into the new project, it already enriches it. Uh, so it's a dialogue with work that others have done. So we think that uh, yeah, working with existing building is something that has a lot of opportunities and a, a richness in it already before for starting doing anything. And it's interesting because at least here in Europe, um, working with existing building has not been seen as a good opportunity to kind of to develop your creativity, something like this. And this is the case of uh, probably our teachers at school that. So we never did an exercise dealing with an existing building, but we noticed that nowadays it's much more common. We usually at school, we propose to work with existing buildings, also because we think it's an enjoyable thing. That's why we propose it to students. But then we realized that, of course, these last years, little by little, a reuse has win more um, a role in the architecture scenario but not so far away. No, there was uh, mainly magazines and talks and interest was in uh, new buildings. So, but I think it's interesting because there is a lot to do and there's a lot of effort made before us and I'm happy to use efforts of previous generations. There's also another question about, um, in ways about genealogies. Um, you know, uh, you know where where do you think are your intellectual roots? <laughs> Almost. Our roots. Yeah, you mentioned Joan Miró, the painter. We're very keen on his work. Um, also the playfulness, but the control that is behind all these kind of free shapes. Apparently, apparently, apparently free freedom. shapes. Yeah. And you discover that our previous <clears throat> drawing that have been even make a, a grid 
so transfers one drawing into another scale. So he was like kind of a bit like an architect. We had a background with uh, Enric Miralles, an architect, I don't know, in the States if you heard of him, because he died quite young, already 20 years ago. But it was an office that uh, when we worked there, almost everything was drawn by hand because there were not, not an, almost no computers. And he was very uh, disciplined to make us draw by hand. And when we were, when we were drawing by hand, I remember he was saying, um, it has to look like a machine has drawn this. So like, not like effortless or... <laughs> and then when the first computer came into the office, it took months he was or one or two years. He you know? was horrified. He was it. horrified of what the things coming out of the machine. was saying, that's impossible. He was breaking the paper, the print. And it took, uh, it's interesting because it took like two years for him to have a, a control and to accept, it, to to accept and to start having beautiful uh, printed drawings out, out of the machine. So also because we learn <clears throat> by hand there, we keep on and we enjoy it. We keep- uh, But I think it's not about by hand or by computer. I think now in the office, we use everything. And I think the interesting thing is to use everything, not to use only one thing. Mm -hmm. And I think it's like, um, because you have learned to draw by hand and now you inherit that and then you use the computer as well. And so you can do uh, all the analog process of design has many qualities and possibilities, uh, very, very, uh, very much linked to the intuition and to the direct transmission of th uh, thoughts to the hand that are very important to keep and to bring them into the digital world as well. So I think it's important that uh, for, for us, to pass from one uh, stage to the other without losing what you learned from before. Uh, not, not, not forgetting everything that was about doing by hand and now we move into the computer only. So I think is our world is very much linked into the two worlds. In fact, the videos are, we have started with our webpage uh, 17 or 18 years ago with all this digital way of um, you know, moving all the, act, activating and making all the elements in the office dance in this um, in this kind of visual uh, choreography. Work, work choreography and and that was a, a web page a very very early one so we are not ignoring or or denying all this world of the digital at all absolutely and but i think uh, the best thing is when you join it all yeah i think it's good that you have a lot of different tools in front of you and then choose the one that Service. suits better what yeah. you want to explain or when, you know, each time.